Let us now again look at the phase lock loop which we started yesterday. This is the block diagram of the phase lock loop. Is it has a phase detector, a loop filter, a loop amplifier and a voltage control oscillator. To proceed further, let us assume that the input signal to the phase lock loop is an angle modulated signal of this kind. It has some amplitude, a carrier frequency and a phase modulation phi of t. And let us also assume that the VCO output is another sinusoidal signal with the same center frequency omega c and some arbitrary phase modulation right which will depend on what is the nature of this signal because after all the VCO is governed by its input the input it has some signal. So depending on the variation of the input it will have some modulation here right. So let us start from this point onwards you might notice that I have chosen the input signal to be a cosine function and the VCO output to be a sine function. That is deliberate and you will soon see the reason or why I have chosen like that. Okay, now let us proceed further. First of all, how do we realize a phase detector? Let us first discuss this issue a little bit and then we will look at the operation in more detail. A phase detector, a very simple realization of the phase detector is as follows. There are many ways of realizing a phase detector, but one of the simplest ways is to simply have a multiplier followed by a low pass filter okay. So for example if your input here is XRT input here is E, e sub VT right uh, then the output out uh, as you can see the output here will contain the sum frequency component as well as the difference frequency component. When you multiply these two signals right you will get sin into cosine and you can split it into a sum frequency component and a difference frequency component right and the difference comp frequency component will be a low pass component right. Since omega ct is same in both of them the difference term will contain only the difference between the two arguments phi t and theta t and the sum will be at a frequency of center at 2 omega c which will be removed by the low pass filter right. So basically if you look at the output of the low pass filter let me call this E sub dt that is a phase detector output. So I am realizing the phase detector as a set of these two blocks right then E sub dt will be half of A sub c into A sub b which are the two amplitudes of the two signals into a constant k sub d which is a constant of this circuit into sin of phi of t minus theta of t you agree with this. So this combination of a multiplier followed by a low pass filter will produce an output which is this and as you can see it is this output E sub dt is a function of the phase error instantaneous phase error if you consider phi of t as the instantaneous input phase and theta of t as the output phase coming from the VCO right then phi of t minus theta of t is some kind of a phase error between these two inputs and you have an output here which somehow depends on this phase error of course it is not a linear dependence there is a, there is a non linear dependence because of the function sinusoid function that is coming to the picture right but nevertheless it is a dependence. Of course, when phi of t minus theta t is small, then this nonlinear dependence will also become almost linear dependence, right? Because you can approximate sin phi t minus theta t as equal to phi t minus theta t when the argument is small. Okay. So k sub d is a phase detector constant, uh, which is associated. In fact, this whole thing is a phase detector constant, but k sub d is associated with the multiplier. multiplier in the phase detector. There are other ways of realizing phase detector but broadly this is the general principle right. You can uh, of course build other devices. So this is how the phase detector of the phase lock loop will be characterized in our model here because typically 
we will realize it using this combination. Let us also look at how the VCO can be characterized because once I know the characterization of each block in this loop then I can proceed with the analysis of this loop that is what I am going to do right to under gain the understanding that all of you are looking forward to. So, how do we model the VCO? The VCO can be modeled in the same way that we modeled an FM signal right because after all VCO is performing the same function it will produce an output whose frequency is whose frequency deviation depends on the input voltage right. So, that is the characterization of the VCO so it is the same characterization. So, what is the instantaneous frequency deviation of the signal that I have just depicted you are saying that the VCO is producing an output A sub V sin of omega C T plus theta of T. So, what is the instantaneous frequency deviation? it is d theta by dt this must be proportional to the input signal right and if you follow the notation that I have used in the diagram of the phase lock loop <coughs> input signal to the VCO is E sub Vt right. So, d theta by dt is some constant let me call it k sub V that is the VCO <coughs> constant times E sub V t or if you want to model the phase itself theta of t is k sub V integral of E sub V alpha d alpha right. So, these are the two equations which will model the VCO right. The instantaneous phase of the VCO is governed by this equation which is a standard FM equation really nothing uh, special about it. So, k sub v here is the VCO constant of course, you can work out what will be the dimensions of all of these constants that we discussed right ok. So, we are now a characterization of every component that we need of course, we already know how to characterize a filter and how to characterize an amplifier. So, I do not have to spend time on that the, the two new components that we had introduced were the phase detector and the VCO which we have characterized now. So, having got a characterization for each of them let us develop a mathematical model which will serve as a framework for our discussion or our understanding of the working of the phase lock loop. In this mathematical model it will be nice if I can get rid of this omega c omega c has no direct role to play in this discussion right because omega c is uh, present in the input as well as in the output right. In fact for all practical purposes what is it that I want I would like to do I would like to see uh, understand how the phase lock loop produces an output whose instantaneous phase theta t is close to the in input phase which is phi of t. So, for all practical purposes I can consider phi of t as some kind of input to the system think of this as a system whose input is phi of t right the unknown unknown phase instantaneous phase and I want to produce an output in a closed loop manner such that the theta t that I am producing follows phi of t right. So, I'm, I would like to produce a model of that kind right. So, if I were to do that I can redraw that loop that I have just discussed I have uh, given to you earlier in terms of an equivalent diagram like this. So, I am now talking about a model for the phase lock loop mathematical model which will help us to do the analysis of course, it turns out to be a nonlinear model right we will see why it is a nonlinear model very soon. What is it that we have at the input we have the unknown phase phi of t right the incoming phase phi of t and I am comparing this the phase detector compares this phase with the phase of the VCO output right which is theta of t right and what does it do it produces an output which is a difference of these two phi t minus theta t and then produces the phase detector output is proportional to the sign of this difference right 
So not S i g n but S i n e right uh, the sine function. So there is a sinusoidal non-linearity here. This would model your E sub dt the output here the output here will be precisely what we are described to be E sub dt is not it except that there will be also a constant which is equal to half A c into A v into K sub d right as if there is an amplifier of this k. Just to recap where, is it, where, where it comes from please remember that this was E sub dt right. So, so far I have produced sin of phi t minus theta t if I want to produce E sub dt the way I have depicted earlier I must multiply this with this constant right. So, I am adding a gain of this much in the block block diagram this is your E sub dt at this point. Following this you have the loop filter the output of the loop filter goes to the amplifier let us say the amplifier has some gain mu right and now what should I put between this point and this theta t to close the loop and how will the VCO be represented here the out the VCO is not being represented as, produ as producing an output which is sin omega c t plus theta t it is now being modeled as producing an output which is equal to theta t right purely a mathematical model for what the VCO is doing right. So, how is theta t is related to this this is E sub V t is not it the amplifier output is E sub V t how are these two related integral. through the integral relationship. So, to close the loop all I have to put is an integrator here with a constant k sub v. You agree with this? I think this should be fairly clear from the development that we carried out, right? So this is a mathematical model which you can study to understand how this works and how precisely what it will be able to do and what it will not be able to do, right? Okay. Now we will do our discussion in two phases in phase 1 we will assume that somehow the loop comes in the lock just to simplify our study right somehow the loop is locked and try to understand when the loop is locked what is the nature of E sub V t right that is phase 1 of our discussion. Phase 2 of our discussion obviously should try to tell us how the lock actually happens right. So, should we do that? We will uh, go through the uh, discussion in two phases rather than trying to understand everything in one go. So, in the first instance, assume that that the PLL the phase lock loop is in is operating in a lock condition. We can simply say that the PL is locked. PLL is locked, which essentially means, what is the meaning of this? This being in a lock condition, what we are trying to say by this is that theta of t is a good estimate of phi of t. Right? That is what the lock condition means for us. It may not be exactly the same, but it's a good estimate of the incoming phase phi of t. This will imply in turn that the error between these two if at all there is a difference would be small right that is the meaning of a lock condition. So, phi of t minus theta of t would be small in the lock condition right and if that is so we can approximate sin phi t minus theta t by phi of t minus theta t you agree with that assuming that this is small. Now, when the loop is not in lock condition we cannot say that because this may be considerably large in that case 
So, when the loop is not in lock condition this approximation cannot be used, but when the loop is operating in the lock condition it is convenient to use this approximation because what it will do is it will convert this nonlinear model why is it a nonlinear model because of the presence of this function here right otherwise everything else is a linear linear if you look at the input output relationship it is a linear system every block is a linear system right this is a simple amplifier this is a linear filter this is again an amplifier this is an integrator everything is linear right this is an adder right everything is linear except for this block here the input is something and the output is sign of that input is some uh, phi t minus theta t the output is a sign of so however if I use that approximation this also becomes linear in fact this goes this is not even required right I am removing this and that makes it a linear uh, model for the phase lock loop. So that gives us what is called uh, a linearized model. of the phase lock loop and once you have this of course I think you do not have uh, you have not yet gone through a course on control systems. Once you have this it becomes a very simple case of a closed loop uh, linear feedback control system right. Uh, it does not matter we, we will not need that background we will whatever we need we will develop it here we will use it here. So, PLL becomes then a linear feedback control system right. And uh, when you are working with linear feedback control systems it will you will find that it is very convenient to work the, uh, not only in the time domain that we have discussed but in fact it is more convenient to work in the Laplace transform domain right rather than the just the Fourier domain. You, so, very briefly we will also work with the Laplace transform domain although most of the time we will not. So, if I work in the Laplace transform domain this linear model becomes something like this. In the Laplace transform domain I will represent every function that I have been so far, so far dealing with as function of s right. So, instead of phi of t at the input I will consider it is Laplace transform phi of s as the input capital phi of s is the Laplace transform of the phase function phi of t small phi of t right. And here you will have theta of s it is a capital theta of s the sinusoidal nonlinearity now goes right. I, I would not have been able to use this Laplace transform notation if I had the sinusoidal nonlinearity because I would not know how to characterize that using the Laplace transformation. I can only deal with linear systems using Fourier transforms and Laplace transforms right that is the convenient thing to do. So, that sinusoidal thing goes because of this approximation right you only have the next stage which is, which is again half a sub c a sub v into k sub d followed by the loop filter. followed by the amplifier let me simply call it gain mu followed by the integrator. And your E sub V T is here. Okay. Uh, yes. So, this should have been simply 1 by s right. I should represent this as 1 by s you are absolutely right. Now, since we assumed that the loop is in a lock condition which means phi of t minus theta of t is small and some let us say constant value. So, what we basically what we are saying is phi of t is approximately equal to theta of t this would in turn imply that d phi by d t is approximately equal to d theta by d t right. 
but what is d phi by dt? d phi by dt is proportional to the message signal empty if the input signal is an fm signal right and d th d phi by dt is proportional to sorry d theta by dt is proportional to e sub vt and since these two are approximately equal what does it mean that e sub vt would be approximately equal to the message signal empty right so therefore this output here is my demodulated output right this is the point that at the moment you need to understand right e sub vt represents my demodulated output the point therefore i can summarize the discussion in the following way when the loop is locked since this will be so this will be so and therefore e sub vt would approximate the message signal empty and therefore the input to the vco is the demodulated output that you are looking forward looking for is that clear so we are therefore finish the discussion on what is what what I mean we have to still of course understand the mathematical analysis of this loop which we will do as we go along but right now even without going through any mathematics if we assume we can conclude that in the log condition the e sub the, the output e sub vt is proportional to the message signal empty that you are looking for in an FMT modulator and therefore the phase lock loop in a lock condition works like an FMD modulator okay you all with me is there any question any discussion at this stage we have to still do the mathematics right but without the mathematics this is what it is okay if there are no questions let us proceed further and the next step that we have to take up take up is how does the locking actually occur right we have to understand um, how does the PLL walk into a lock condition right so we want like to we like to show that the phase error that we have at any instant whatever phase error we have will tend to drive the PLL into a locked condition okay that is the second stage of our discussion we like to show that the whatever instantaneous phase error the loop has right or whatever uh, error we have here uh, I should not be using this diagram I should be using this diagram whatever error we have here at any, at any time will serve will operate in such a manner that it will try to drive itself to 0 or make it small make itself small right the loop will work in such a manner that this error will tend to become small the loop will tend to be in a lock condition remember in doing that I cannot use the linear model right because initially the phase error may not be small right so I must now work with the at this stage work with the nonlinear model once the lock has been achieved we can work with the linear model right so first let us try to understand this thing. to carry out this discussion I will again to simplify the discussion somewhat I will assume that the loop filter is absent right remember there is already a filter which is inbuilt into the phase detector there is a low pass filter there right that we are assuming is still there but the additional loop filter that I have put here right is not there when the additional loop filter is not there we call this as a first order loop right as to why we call it a first order loop is something will uh, will become obvious later but right now we will assume that this is absent so let me state this assumption uh, we will assume that 
loop filter is absent. First order loop, and we'll we'll find that the PLL works even when there is no loop filter, and then we'll try to understand why a loop filter, in what manner a loop filter might help. At the moment, we'll assume that the loop filter does not work, uh, does not is not present at all. So this is for simplicity. Okay. So we have E sub V T equal to half mu times A sub C A sub V K sub D into sine of phi of T minus theta of T. And theta of t, phi of t is the input, theta of t is the output. Let me denote this complete thing as k sub d, as a constant k sub d, rather than carrying on all these constants with me throughout. Right? K sub t. This t, of course, does not denote time. It just this t stands for total gain. You can think of this as some kind of a gain in the loop. Right? This is a gain term. This is a gain term. Well, these are amplitude terms, but effectively, they are coming in this product, right? So this is called the loop gain, total loop gain. That's why I'm putting k sub t. So don't confuse this t with time. This stands for total. I could have probably put capital T to simplify, but let's keep it small t. So k sub t integral of sine phi of t, uh, phi of alpha maybe. In minus theta of alpha d alpha, right? Is that a you see what where is it, where is it coming from? We are looking at this output, this is the integral of this, right? Now, because the loop filter has gone, because the loop filter has gone, E v t is nothing but equal to E sub d t except for a constant mu, right? So, therefore. E V T is same thing as E D T except for including mu. Right? I'm able to do this because I'm ignoring the loop filter because I'm assuming that the loop filter is absent. Right? So these two things become the same, except for the constant mu. Is that okay? So that is why E sub V T is this, which is this, and the integral of this is your theta t. Is that okay? Or alternatively, I can write d theta by dt, which is the model for the VCO. This is also a model for the VCO. Can be written as k sub t sine phi of t minus theta of t, because this is from minus infinity to t, and you are differentiating with respect to t. Now this is actually the governing equation which dictates the dynamics of the loop you understand at any time instant phi of t is the input phase theta of t is the output phase the output phase at any time instant as a function of the input phase is governed by this nonlinear differential equation you appreciate this so this nonlinear differential equation which we have now arrived at provides a means to study how theta of t will evolve as a function of time right if i know how to solve this equation if i know how this equation will behave that will give me an understanding of how theta of t behaves as a function of time with respect to phi of t right that's what i need to study unfortunately because it is a nonlinear equation it's also very difficult to study right so we need to uh, evolve special methods of trying to gain an understanding of how this works right to do that is there any question so far before I proceed further to do the discussion further we'll do the discussion when phi of t is of a special is of is a special kind of function rather than for a general kind of function right to look at a general solution of this is a very cumbersome very difficult exercise to simplify the discussion further let's assume that phi of t has a very sim special simple nature 
what does it mean phi of t represents what it represents the phase modulation at the input right I am I am going to make that modulation very simple right that is all I am saying to study, study the effect and to study how the phase lock loop actually achieves lock right. So to do that what I am going to say is let the input fm signal let the input to the fm modulator at the transmitter be a very simple kind of signal and the simple kind of signal I am considering here is a unit step signal unit step function not a general m of t but m of t is equal to u t right that is a simplification that I am bringing about, bringing about. So let the input to your fm modulator be a unit step function what does it mean that your d phi by dt is well let I, I would not I should not call it a unit it is proportional to a unit step function is equal to delta omega times ut. that is the instantaneous frequency let us say that was constant let us say the input signal was having the carrier was uh, the fm modulator was producing a constant frequency carrier signal initially and suddenly you provide a step change in the frequency that is equivalent to mt being a step function is that okay. So you are producing a step change in the input signal so if you take your mt to be a unit step function such that this change in amplitude at the input to the VCO uh, input to the modulator produces a frequency change of delta omega your frequency deviation right and now it becomes so from FC it becomes FC plus delta F the output output this was empty but now I am plotting the carrier frequency initially the carrier frequency was FC and now it becomes FC plus delta F. So this is a, a kind of simplification I am talking about. So this is a step of magnitude delta omega. And let me denote the phase error phi of t minus theta t by a symbol psi of t right. I am going to call the phase error. So let me define psi of t as the instantaneous phase error then I can write d theta by dt is equal to d phi by dt minus d psi by dt right that comes from this equation but d phi by dt is modeled by this equation right this is delta omega I am assuming uh, I am writing the equation only for t greater than 0 right so that I do not have to work uh, worry about the fact that so there is a unit step function involved at t equal to 0 right. So let me write this equation only for t greater than or equal to 0 so this is delta omega minus <coughs> d psi t by dt for t greater than or equal to 0 right and what is d theta by dt equal to in term remember your d theta by dt it is kt sin of psi t right. So this is equal to k sub t sin c sin of psi t. So what do I have now for t greater than or equal to 0 right basically what I have derived is this equation if you look at look at these two together right if you look at these two together I have a differential equation for the phase error right which I can rewrite as d psi by dt plus I am taking this to the right hand side plus k t sin of psi of t is equal to delta omega for t greater than 0 so for the special case 
when the FM signal is essentially a step change in the frequency at the input to the PLL, the governing equation for the phase error is this differential equation right and we like to understand under what conditions will this differential equation imply a movement towards psi of t becoming 0 right. How does psi of t become 0? Will whether or not it will become 0 should come out by studying this differential equation right. Now when you want to study nonlinear differential equations one pictorial one uh, physically appealing way is to represent this the behavior of this equation uh, pictorially by in a, in a uh, di by a diagram called the phase plane plot right. So we we'll like to just see how that happens. So we we'll like to try to study this through a device called the phase plane plot. The phase plane plot essentially is a plot of these quantities d psi t versus d psi by d t versus psi of t right. That is at any time instant how is the derivative of the quantity related to the quantity itself. You plot this against this okay. Think of this as x and this as y and plot that that is called a phase plane plot okay. So we want to plot this x axis is instantaneous phase error just we can remove the time dependence so that it does not confuse us just plot psi or d psi by dt versus psi what is the nature of this think of this as y and this as x right. So y is equal to kt times ktx y, y plus ktx is equal to delta omega and you are plotting y against x what kind of function is this this is a sinusoidal function y plus kt sin x right what is the value let us say for psi equal to 0 delta omega right and so you may have a function like that. I have not plotted a good sinusoidal function you can plot a better one. This point corresponds to delta omega. So then this value will be equal to uh, what is the peak value of the sinusoidal function? What is the peak value? Kt plus delta omega. And what will be the value here? Delta omega minus kt. Can you see this? Can you all of you can see this? At these points, d psi by dt becomes zero, right? At these two points, so that's a way to look at it. So at this point, uh, it will be equal to. Uh, at one point, it will be kt plus delta omega. At the other points, it will be delta omega minus kt. Right? So these are the. Uh, this is the phase plane, phase plane plot okay. So it's look a study of this phase plane plot is very interesting and gives us all the insight that we need to understand how a phase lock loop locks itself right. So but before we do that is this plot all right all of you understand this okay. Let me read uh, redo, redo the plot so that we can have a better discussion. I hope this one turn will turn out to be better right. So this is d psi by dt <coughs> versus psi this is delta omega this is k sub t plus delta omega this is delta omega minus k sub t okay. What we are saying is the following that the dynamics of the phase error will be such that 
d psi by d t and psi at any time instant must be consistent with respect to each other through this diagram right. If d psi by d t is this value the corresponding phase error must be this value really it is a solution of the equation depicted diagrammatically in some sense right. So, uh, the, the values of d psi by d t and psi must satisfy this relationship which is shown in this graphical form at any point in time. Let us assume to start with when the input signal was a, of a constant frequency that is what we have done we are assuming that the input signal was of a constant frequency and suddenly there is a step change in the input frequency right. So, when the input sig signal was at a constant frequency for a long time let us assume that the loop was in lock earlier and the loop was in a lock condition where was it psi was equal to 0 right. So, you were at this point. So, assume for our discussion now that PLL was initially locked So, you were at this point let us call this point B because at that point psi was 0 the phase error was 0 right. Now, what will happen let us also understand another significance of the phase plane plot before you take the argument further. Let us consider at any in uh, your at a certain point on the phase plane plot where d psi by d t is positive. Now, once this is so what will be the nature of psi of t as a function of time what can you say can you make any statement remember d t is time in increment in time this will always be positive is not it time only progresses forward it never goes backward right therefore d psi will always imply a positive increment. So, if this if, if you are in a particular po at a particular point on this phase spin plot where this is positive where the derivative is positive it in imply that at from this point onwards the phase error will increase as a function of time right because if the de derivative is positive. So, psi of t must increase as a function of time slope is positive right if on the other hand so this will imply an increasing value of psi of t psi of t increases as a function of time with respect to time I am talking here with respect to time is this point understood this is a very key point you need to understand this point when d psi by now I am talking about the temporal behavior time behavior of the signal time behavior of the phase error because d psi by t is positive at a certain point what we are saying is that will imply that the dynamics will be such that the phase error will increase as a function of time. Similarly on the other hand when d psi by d t is negative psi of t will decrease as a function of time right. right? What does it mean? that if you are on the positive side of this phase plane plot anywhere we will move along this trajectory the the d psi by dt and psi of t always have to be related by this trajectory right you can only move along this right. But when d psi by dt is positive that is you are in the positive side of this plane positive half of this plane the phase error will try to move to the right you, your trajectory you will move along the trajectory to the right because the phase error has to increase as a function of time right no matter where you are if you are in the positive cycle positive side you will keep moving to the right. If you are on the negative side you will keep moving to the left along the trajectory are you with me on this Sir, but that is with respect to time <coughs> you have to something else. Yes the time dependence is not obvious here but the fact that this is positive it will imply that psi of t has to increase as a function of time and where is psi increasing to the right yes. suppose you are here how can it we are not showing exactly what is a 
rate at which it moves, but it has to move in this direction. That is all we are saying. We are not able to say at what rate it will move, but we, we know we do know that it will move in the right on the right hand side to the right hand side. Here it will move to the left hand side because psi of t has to decrease when psi d psi by rate is negative. Psi of t has to increase, right? So increase increases on this direction or to the right side, decreases to the left side. Okay. That is all we are saying. So we do not know of course at what rate it increases and what rate decreases, but the fact that it increases means that it will move along this direction at a certain rate, okay. precise rate from this diagram we cannot figure that out, but eventually where it will go we will be able to figure out. Okay. If, we, if this discussion is okay then we can proceed forward because this is the way we understand the dynamics of a nonlinear system through the phase plane plot. I mean what I am really telling you is how a phase plane plot should be interpreted to understand the dynamics right. If you understood this then we can move forward all right. Now suppose initially you are at this point B when the loop is initially locked. So where will you start moving now? You will move, start moving towards the right till you reach this point. What happens to d psi by dt at this point? It becomes 0. So it stops to increase, right. If d psi by dt becomes 0, it stops to increase and in some sense a lock has been achieved. But lock has been achieved not with the 0 value of the phase error, but with some finite value of the phase error. But we do not know whether it is a, a really a perfect lock condition. Suppose you are uh, uh, let us say you 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 are you reach somewhere here by some chance, right? What will happen now? It will try to move to the left again to the same point, right? So even if you had deviated from this either on the positive side or on the negative side, you will tend to return to this point. So you can think of this point let us call this point A as some kind of a stable operating point of the system right. So point A is a stable operating point right. Incidentally this will not be a stable operating point as you can see this is a quasi stable operating point an unstable operating point because if you slightly move on either side you will move away from this point rather than towards this point right. So in <coughs> excuse me in summary in the upper half plane we will move along the trajectory on the right to the right side in the lower half plane we will move along the trajectory to the left side and that leads us to the, the conclusion that point A is a stable operating point of the phase lock loop. So uh, at this point when it when there is an attempt to move away from this the loop will try to return to this condition right. So point A is a stable operating point as I just mentioned earlier and the implication of that is when it attempts to move away from point A and the operation attempts to move away from from A even by a small amount it is forced back to point A. We can also call it the steady state operating point. So what we are basically trying to say is that in this condition the loop will try to arrive to this point right. When you start with psi equal to 0 it will not stay at psi equal to 0 because of the step change in delta omega step change in the input frequency it will now try to uh, reach a point where there is a steady state error phase error. Right. There is a steady state operating point, but at that point there is no frequency error because d psi by dt is equal to 0. And think of d psi t when 
psi, if psi t is the instantaneous phase error d psi by dt is the instantaneous frequency error. So the loop would have locked itself that is the VCO would have locked itself to the new frequency right there is no frequency error at this stage but that reduction of frequency error to 0 is associated with a finite phase error in the process right the phase error does not remain 0 right. So steady state phase error let us call it psi sub ss is some value that value is governed by this point this value this is the value of psi ss right. we will write down an expression for this later but we can also see that the steady state frequency error how much is this equal to 0 in this lock condition right. So we will stop here try to study this further try to write an expression for what is the steady state phase error and then try to understand what does the loop filter achieve under what conditions lock will occur under what conditions it will not occur right we will like to study all these things next time thank you very much. <coughs>